Welcome to the infamous Todd show. Now today we're doing morning people versus night people. Now I have a disclaimer right from the beginning. I'm a morning person. I'm one of those obnoxious people that have the highest energy level the moment they wake up. From that second on, it's all downhill. In the movie Parenthood, there was a child that put a garbage can over his head. He was so filled with energy and he just kept running into the wall. That was me. I was that type A adrenaline Ritalin child, the mess in the store that you would look at their parents and bring shame upon them. That was me as a child. I've always been that way. I would wake up in the morning as a kid growing up and I would go through the house pissing off my siblings by singing good morning, good morning, I'm up and how are you? Good morning, good morning to you and you and you and you. Yeah, that was me, that guy. And here I am, 57 years later, and I'm still that person. I wake up with lots of energy. So I wanted to make this video because my Michael is the opposite. He is not a morning people. In fact, he's one of those night people that wants to kill morning people. So I thought it would be funny to do a segment on showing how the morning people rule the world. And um, unfortunately, it didn't work out well for me. Uh, there's an... There's an old proverb that says, the early bird always catches the worm. And I figured there's 50% of the population that doesn't relate to being a morning or a night person. I mean, if you went up to them and asked them if they were a morning or a night person, they would define one of the two. But as a whole, 50% of the population is not a morning person. And as I start rattling off these statistics, so you don't think I'm just making them up, if you look to the info section below this video, it'll show all of the places that I researched. So 50% of the population is neither a day person or a night person. 30% approximately are night people, leaving 20% that are day people. 47% of us inherited if we are a morning, night, or in-between type of person. The genetics firm 23andMe actually identified 15 different genes that link us to that trait. The median age of the average person that sleeps is nine hours because most people sleep between six hours and 14 hours a day. On today's episode, we're gonna show five differences between day people and night people. Our founding father, Ben Franklin, promised me in one of his famous quotes that early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. So I think we should take those three items as the first three items of our five on our list. Now, the first one being healthy. Let's break that down into two parts, mental health and physical health. Mental health. Numerous studies have proven that morning people are more apt to be persistent, self-directed, and agreeable. They set higher goals for themselves and plan for the future. And if you do not agree with me, you're already cynical and you're not just listening to this with a smile on your face. Okay, you have to smile like that. Okay, that's better. Physical health. Now, night people tend to be more depressed and use and abuse alcohol. Evening people tend to be smokers. They're current or lifelong smokers, much less likely to stop smoking, more likely to be um, addicted to nicotine. They are twice as likely to suffer from insomnia. Morning people's strength remains consistent throughout the day, but night people's strength peaks at higher levels at nighttime. Day people have a significantly smaller BMI, body mass, whereas a night person tends to sleep less or have their sleep interrupted. When they wake early, their body is still creating melatonin and by disrupting it and they push their body back into daytime mode, they have a lot of uh, negative psychological consequences, like a different sensitivity to insulin or gluten, which forces them to gain weight. The evening people are more apt to carry the GTO gene, which is the gene that produces obesity. Remember, there are always people that are the exception to the rule. Just because you're a 104-year-old lady living in Peru, smoking 12 cigarettes a day does not mean that cigarettes are now less dangerous. Now, the second of the five is wealthier. Believe it or not, night people have more money, statistically, than morning people. Night people are more apt to have a vehicle than day people. And in the new world economy, 
the drive is not necessarily to shift towards an early morning, but later in the day. Statistics are now being done proving that having people come into work at 10 o'clock, they're more productive for morning, night, and the people in between than coming in at earlier hours. So you're going to start seeing more and more companies start to shift their hours to accommodate the new statistics coming out because the new economy for this country and many of the other developed countries around the world is, um, is we're no longer basing ourselves on agricultural and manufacturing stuff like this where we need construction and stuff where we need daylight. We can work all, all night long and people that are more apt to work all night long obviously would be the night people, not the day people. I'm already losing the battle of proving to Michael that us day people are better than night people. Um, night people, across all different uh, studies being done, are proving that they outperform us day people in intuitive intelligence, in creative thinking, and inductive reasoning. Now, number four is durational stability. Which of us lasts longer? Which one of us are more productive? Well, morning people have the ability to anticipate problems and try to minimize them. One of the cool things that I read in all these statistics is this probably explains why you see so many women in daytime roles because women outnumber men by 9% as self-identifying as a morning person. Night owls, though, have a longer duration throughout the day. They might start off slower, but as the day goes on, their strength increases with a peaking later into the night where most of the day people start off early before they even get to work. They get to work, they're now very active, and then usually by mid-afternoon, they're already starting to slow down. 63% of the people that are over 60 years old identify themselves as morning people, whereas there's only 24% of the people that are under 30 that consider themselves as morning people. I should also note that if you're over 60, you should make sure that you aren't sleeping more than nine hours a day because all the studies prove that you'll have a shorter life if you sleep more than nine hours a day. So that means 75% of the people that are night owls are under 30. Now I know that we usually consider people that are night owls kind of lazy because they're hard to wake up and get going and and we have all these negative traits that we assign upon them, but actually they sleep less hours. So if we can keep them productive at nighttime with positions that are also at nighttime, they far excel over the morning people and the day people. But the problem is when you wake them up in the morning, it's like jet lag and it's called social lag. Think about it. If you are sleeping six hours a day for 12 days, which is what the average American sleeps now, your cognitive and physical performance becomes virtually indistinguishable from someone who has had cocktails or stayed up for 24 hours straight. In other words, normal amounts of sleeping at only six hours a night makes you look drunk. Now, morning people are more apt to have a better sense of well-being and they have a better sleeping schedule. Morning people were less likely to need more than eight hours of sleep. They sleep more soundly, they achieve REM phase of sleeping faster and longer, they're less likely to sweat while they're sleeping, and or, or sleepwalk. Okay, the wind's starting to pick up, and uh, before I blow over the camera and ruin everything, let's start wrapping it up. Number four, like I said, um, the procrastinators are starting to catch up. They're starting to come into their own. As we discussed in number one through four, there are a lot of cause and effect on why a night person might be a procrastinator. And number five, I thought for sure I was going to win. Number five is creativity. I thought for sure the morning people would be more creative. But for every one person that considers themselves a morning person, there's four and a half creative people that consider themselves night people. So definitely got us beat. And a lot of statistics coming out also shows that because during the daytime, your brain tends to be more analytical than creative. And as the day progresses, it becomes creative. And then when I read that, I thought that's a, a lot with me also. I don't get up early in the morning to paint or to write a book. And, um, but in the meantime, all of us are losing sleep. 
Ever since 1905, we've been losing a minute of sleep every single year. And it's shifting into the night. So the night people are starting to take over. And I think that my project here to prove Michael wrong and to prove me as a day person right was not a success. I'm going to create another one of these videos probably just to show Michael. And I won't show any of the stuff that's good about the night people. That's only because I want him to myself during the day. But in the meantime, try to get some sleep. If you haven't already, I'm begging you, please, please, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you're, if you're really super nice, you'll hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. It's no obligation. It's not going to cost you a penny. And if anything, it lets YouTube know that what I'm trying to do here is halfway decent and we're getting better, perhaps, maybe. But in the meantime, I hope that you'll stick around to watch the next show next week, which will be Dogs vs. Cats. And that's followed also by one that's called Boxers or Briefs. But in the meantime, welcome to the infamous Todd Show, and go make it a great day. Bye.